As he wandered through the Bavarian market town, my man looked harmless enough, friendly, jovial even. I knew him by a code name, Frederick. He was a courier. Excuse me, sir, would you mind giving me a lift? I'm sorry, sir, I I'm can't. a doctor. It's most urgent, a maternity case. You look the sort of man I'd understand. Now, look, sir, I'm not insured. That's very kind of you, it is. Just up the main road, about a couple of kilometers. Thank you very much indeed. Oh. It was time for me to do a little market research to find out which item on his shopping list was the one that he'd been given orders not to forget. There's no house here? That's right. Come on, your wallet. Hand it over. You're not a doctor? That's right. It always works. Though, open the door now and get out. Quickly. Could I get my shopping Come on, out. Every government has its secret service branch. America, at CIA. France, Deuxième Bureau. England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Captain Frank, here are the things he bought in the market. If you have to destroy anything, replace it. Put back everything exactly as you found it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, that's just fine. Uh, hook her up. Could he have slipped the message into his pocket? No, I had him in my sights the whole time. There's nothing in his small change. How about uh, this young gentleman? Is uh, he concealing anything? I've searched him. The limbs are solid. I've got it. Recording wire. Something to replace it. Fuse wire. Anything. Quickly, please. Yes? Well, keep him busy. Your friend's outside. Oh, already? He thumbed a ride. Here you are. Now wrap that round there, then replace it and put everything back in the car exactly as it was. Quickly, please. All right. That's it. He held me up with a gun and took my car. That's him! He said he was a doctor. Who is this gentleman? Reports a stolen car, sir. That's the man. He stole my car and he also took my wallet. Can you describe the wallet, sir? Yes. Brown calf with the letters J.R. in gold. Is this it? Yes. See that everything's there and get his signature. Why did you arrest this man? He's an American deserter. He's been wanted for some time. No, but why did you stop him? He was driving too fast and crashed his car. My car? Your car. Where is it? We had it pulled into the yard. May I see it? Of course. And your wallet? Is everything in it? The intercepted recording led me back to headquarters SDCAL. Strategic Defense Construction Allied Liaison, quite a mouthful. There, across the conference table, a group of military gentlemen wage some of their toughest battles. I was calling on Colonel Doyle, officer in charge of security. 
What have you got for me there, Mr. Drake? No trouble, I'm afraid, Colonel. I took this recording off one of their agents. He doesn't know he's been robbed. Not yet, not until he gets home. The information odds seem to tie in with your experiments here, so I, I brought it to you first. Oh, don't keep me in suspense. All right. Dire cost of replacing existing bunkers at Oberfeld with those Plan G group is restrictive. The government's concerned with possible logistic problems for two divisional supply dumps maintained in the southern sectors. Cut it. I just can't believe it. Your stuff? Yes, and the voice is ours, too. Sure. I'm positive. You come with me. Avec ce goût plongé et restrictif, je peux confirmer que je ne suis pas complètement satisfait du succès de la division sud dans le récent exercice au son outil Dudenplatz. De nouveaux programmes d'entraînement sont en projet pour l'avenir immédiat. Et quand ils sont terminés, je serai prêt à déclarer la somme totale dépensée jusqu'à ce jour pour la construction et le développement du son outil. Et pour le travail et les activités dont ils sont associés. Et ceci, monsieur. In the booth, the right hand one, that's right. And this, this is of vital importance when considering the durability of stressed concrete. And gentlemen, I urge you to take into account when considering the sighting of these instruments. De la Permettez-moi de dire très clairement que je ne fais aucune critique sur l'installation présente, mais je fais une enquête extensive sur la façon dont les installations sont organisées. File you are, sponsor. Thank you. Ruth Mitchell. Here you are. Thank you. You've had no reason to suspect her before. No. If I hadn't heard her voice, I would never have believed it. Ruth Mitchell. Four years with you, before that at Geneva, and before that, Land Forces Fontainebleau. And before that, Edinburgh University. She's quiet, reserved, prim, superior, and unapproachable. And a traitor. And an idealist. Impressionable, easily corrupted. What's behind it all? Leave it to me. concentration. May I introduce myself? My name is John Drake. You're Scots, aren't you? What's your name? Excuse me, but I'm reading. I'm not in the mood for conversation, Mr. Drake. It's a pity, Miss Mitchell, because I am. How did you know my name? You don't work at... Headquarters? No, let's just say that I have a uh, profound interest in you. Who are you? I told you, John Drake. That doesn't tell me anything. Perhaps this will. What went wrong with your end of the last operation? I don't understand. Don't you? I kept the date in the marketplace, but it turned out to be a journey for nothing, because that's what we found at the other end of the line, Miss Mitchell. Nothing. It's too public here. My apartment's just around the corner. We can talk better there. Uh, as you wish. I'll have to cancel an appointment first. <laughs> Her sort doesn't suddenly invite a stranger to her apartment. She wasn't canceling any appointment. She was making one. She was out of her depth and calling for help. And everything was still very prim and proper. Pardon me, I'm uh, interested in faces. <clears throat> There's an ashtray for you here. Thank you very much. Expecting someone, Miss Mitchell.
Now, Mr. Drake, will you tell me what you want to see me about? I told you there wasn't any message. No message. You kept the date at the marketplace and something went wrong? That's right, but it wasn't discovered till I got to the other end. I see. Naturally, everyone is very concerned about it. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, Mr. Drake. Colonel Doyle, thank goodness that you're here. Is this the man? Yes. He says his name is Drake, but I've never seen him before. He's been asking a lot of questions, something about a message. I remember security instructions, so of course... Well, you I... acted very properly, Miss Mitchell. I need hardly tell you, you're not to mention this to anyone. Now, if you don't mind, perhaps we can discuss this message somewhere else, Mr. Drake. We'll uh, meet again, Miss Mitchell. Well, Miss Mitchell is coming with us. Is she? Oh. Well, uh, after you. I know any characters that go about like that. Where did you see him? Oh, desert sheiks and beatniks of beards like that. The uh, toy seller in the marketplace had one, and the gentleman in the photograph in Miss Mitchell's apartment had one. May I? No, certainly. Thanks very much. I'd say they're pack sites. What? Cult people. Oh. You know, the simple life, back to nature sort of thing. They live as close to the earth and as far from the pulse of events as they can get. And Miss Mitchell has connections? Well, that's the kind of a girl she is, Drake. We know all about it. As a matter of fact, she's kind of a bore on the subject. The pack sites, have you got anything on them? No, no political taint. Is she still waiting outside? Yes. You know, she made a statement. Everything you said. She's a clever girl. She sensed our trap and sidetracked us. We've shown our hand now. What's the next move? Well, she doesn't know we have the recording. Let's try uh, shock tactics. Have her sent in, would you? Sure. Yes, sir. Send in Miss Mitchell, will you please? Colonel Doyle, they say that you've cancelled my duties for the rest of the week. Uh, that's right, Miss Mitchell. Now, I should take it that I'm suspended. For the time being, yes. Well, that's most unfair. I'm approached by a man I've never even seen before. I immediately report it. bunkers at Oberfeld. That's my voice, isn't it? There can be no doubt about that, Miss Mitchell. It's Thursday's meeting. All right, Miss Mitchell, let's stop fooling each other, shall we? It's time we had the truth. What's he doing here? He's going to ask you some questions. Well, do I have to answer them? Yes, you do. That's your voice? Yes. Where did you make that recording? I expect it was made at last Thursday's conference. No. I've checked it over very carefully. The phrasing is different, it's in a different order, and you have omitted points of no strategic interest. When did you make it? Who is he? Answer his questions. When did you make that recording, Miss Mitchell? I told you I have never made any recording outside the conference room. You made that recording and you made it outside the conference room since the meeting on Thursday and before Saturday morning when it came into my hands. Where did you make it? I told you I have never made any... Who did you make it for? I have never made any... Who are your associates? You know, I'm not going to give up until I have the truth, Miss Mitchell. If that recording was not made at the conference on Thursday, it was not made by me. It was made since the conference, and it is your voice. Mr. Drake, or whoever you are, I am not a liar. I have told you the truth, and I do not intend to answer any more of your questions. You can't get rid of me as easily as that, you know. The only way you can escape is by telling me everything. You left at half past four, went home, changed, and caught the five o'clock bus to the lake. I took the ferry to the island and I stayed there the rest of the weekend. Yes, uh, you know, you have a remarkable memory, Miss Mitchell. It's not hard to remember what only happened a week ago. Much more difficult to remember the things that didn't happen. All right, Miss Mitchell, we'll go through all that once again. Oh, no, not again. Please, I can't, I won't. Yes, you can and you will. Oh, please, can't we stop just for a minute? All right. While we're resting, perhaps you'd like to tell me a little more about your friends on the island, the uh, pack sites. I've told you everything about them again and again. Huh? And the uh, gentleman in the photograph there, who's he? Dr. Brenner, he's our chief counselor. He's the founder of our organization. What does he believe in? What are his politics? He has none. He believes that people should withdraw themselves from the affairs of the world. If only we could. All right, Miss Mitchell, I'd like to meet your pack sites. You go there every weekend, don't you? This time you're going to take me with you. You're going to introduce me as a friend. You're going to say nothing about the security leak. I wouldn't dream of bringing such unpleasantness into their lives. That's splendid. We'll leave in about an hour.
I've seen you somewhere before. That's quite possible. I sell my little men on market days in towns around here. And that's where I've seen you, then. You come to join our happy band? Oh, I wish I could. No, I'm here for a, uh, a peaceful weekend. You couldn't have come to a better place. What's your name? Drake. Oh, no, no. We use Christian names, here. Huh? Mine's Benedict. Mine's plain old-fashioned John. <laughs> Hello, Ruth. Hello, Benedict. How does John like our little community? I'm very impressed. I'm looking forward to meeting your founder, Dr. Brenner. Oh, Joseph. He'll be in the high pastures. But you'll get a chance of meeting him this evening yes. before the council meeting. You won't forget, will you? <laughs> That's not very likely. <laughs> Ruth is one of our councillors. Auf Wiedersehen, then. I uh, want to see everything before it gets dark. Council meeting now. You said you wanted me to introduce you to Dr. Brenner. Oh, fine, I'll come along. Mr. Drake. Yes, Miss Mitchell. Don't you think that honesty and sincerity of purpose are, are qualities that can be read in people's faces, in their eyes? Yes, sometimes. Well, being with you these last two days, I've recognized those qualities in you. You surprise me, Miss Mitchell. Now you're being cynical. Mr. Drake, can't you see those qualities in my eyes, in my face? Can you really believe that I'm a traitor? Miss Mitchell, you have eyes of exceptional innocence, but then I, I once knew a mass murderer who had the face of a saint. Come along, or you won't have time to talk to Dr. Brenner. Welcome home, Ruth. And I believe your name is John. That's right, and you're Dr. Brenner. And Joseph. And this is my wife, Greta. Is it not? You're American? Oh, we have all nationalities here. We all have the same aim, to find true peace under the rule of service to nature and to one another. We work to make our small world a better place, without hate, without violence. It's so nice to have you bring a friend here, Ruth. She never brought a friend before, Joseph. She brought the dark girl, Suzanne, wasn't but it? But never a gentleman. Now you have found us, I hope you will come here often, John. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Now, if you'll excuse us, it's time to start our meeting. Of course. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Such a nice open face, to young man. Yes. Now, first we must consider the spring sowing. In the long paddock, we will sow barley this year. And in the lower paddock, it's time to sow grass again. Hot in here. Makes one sleepy after a day in the air. Now for the farm replacements. Would you mind checking the list while I read the listed numbers in the catalog? Two Dutch hoes, 13056. Three spades, 13060. One bill hook, 
You are now fast asleep. You cannot open your eyes. Tell me, Miss Mitchell, last Thursday's meeting, I've mislaid my agenda. Kindly run over it for me. Who was present? General Brady. Air Vice Marshal Harrison. Colonel Chente. Colonel Bossier. Oh, yes, yes, I remember now, Miss Mitchell. Just remind me again, didn't Colonel Bossier say something about regrouping the Southern Divisions? I can confirm that I am not totally satisfied. As to the success of the Southern Divisions. In their recent exercises in the Udenplatz range. Further training programs. Have been and after their completion, I am prepared to make a statement. Stop! Excuse me, Miss Mitchell. I'll ask you to continue in a minute. Who is it? Frederick, what are you doing here? I had to come here, Doctor. You have orders never to come here or contact us directly. I had to warn you. Your last message fell into the wrong hands. The wrong hands? How? My car was stolen. It was a fake theft. But when I got home, the recording was gone. Who stole your car? An American. American? What did he look like? He was tall, well-built, fair blue eyes. About 30, I would think. Wait here a minute. And now, Miss Mitchell, I'm going to repeat the last number. When I do, you will wake up. You will remember nothing. One, three, oh, seven, oh. Rules, one, three, oh, seven, oh. Oh, sorry. My dear, will you continue with the rest of the list? I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Dr. Brenner here. I, I don't believe in violence. We'll see about that. Turn around, Mr. Drake. Oh, you'll make a professional job of it, Doctor. I think perhaps you've done it before. We're going to take you across the water and hand you over to the police. Oh, now, come, tell the truth, Doctor. You intend to kill me, don't you? But not here. You wouldn't like your innocent lambs to know they're being teamed up with a, a ravaging wolf. Down to the key. Quick. Uh, look better to the flock uh, if you were to go first, Doctor. Don't you think? pleased to learn how it was that the recording had been made. She was beginning to fear that her mind was unhinged, for she'd become a traitor without even knowing it. 